was it Durant a couple years ago that that was the Fourth of July, and that yeah. kind of seemed that, long. that was late. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is this would be unheard of in in certainly in basketball. I remember remember it was a big deal this year that LeBron signed like on the first day. Was well, didn't it be in the first? Yeah, day? it was the okay. first day. Yeah, I don't. I I feel like it was. I mean, it was later into the day, but it was definitely yeah. the first Come on, day. LeBron. Step yeah. it up. They just put a. This was the year. I think they just put a press release out on like Instagram. Yeah, it was like a screenshot on Clutch Sports that says LeBron's going to sign with the Lakers, There's, and that was the end of it. There was no. Um, you know, move with Jim Gray. There was no, no. signed in. Uh, no Woj bomb. No, nothing he wrote in uh, players. Only, you know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Which players tribute? He just my next chapter. Yeah, just. Or in his case, it'd be Sports Illustrated. I'm coming Sports home. That's right. I'm coming home. Instead of just yeah, I'm a Laker. Or the uninterrupted, or one of his many like four thousand different ventures that he does. Yeah. Uh, he could handle all of that. Maybe Bryce Harper is going to do a show with Jim Gray. Let's hope not. Yeah, let's yeah. definitely. Hope not. But. Nor uh, Mike Trout, whenever he becomes available. I mean, I wonder what he would get on the open market. There were suggestions of a billion dollars. For him? Mike Trout is worth a <laughs> billion dollars. Uh, not quite, though, to a team that's called the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Correct. Yeah. Because they're still playing that just tools. screams That just screams irrelevance. Yeah. Like, when you have to... When you have to throw in Los Angeles in hopes of getting some of that right. rub, you don't want it to be Anaheim. For some reason, California wasn't good enough, so it has to be the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Yep, and the absurdity. Anybody that think, oh, that's just that's L.A. That's L. Eh. It's not, and they mar- those markets feel different. They they claim to be different. They want to be different, and it's just a different. He's not a Dodger. Mm-hmm. He's on the Angels, and. Nothing wrong with that franchise. It's just not the same. It's what Clippers have dealt with being under the lake. It's just they're not the same. Brooklyn Nets. Yep. Like it's it's not that far away from Madison Square Garden. Yeah. <laughs> but we act like it's in a different world. Yeah. It's not the basketball mecca. No, it is the not. Knicks. It is, They've it, got the mecca. Yes, they have yeah. things on lock. You think Manny Machado can loan the Alliance of American Footballs? Some money because apparently that story involving the uh, Carolina hockey owner that has to do with uh, the AAF running short on money already. Yikes! It's week two. Yeah, we'll explain more next. So Manny Machado signs a ten-year, three hundred million dollar deal with the San Diego Padres. No word on Bryce Harper yet, and now we've got. The Alliance of American Football already needing some money. Uh, It turns out, we reported yesterday, the Carolina Hurricanes majority owner, uh, Tom Dundon, has invested $250 million into the new startup football league. Well, because apparently there was concern that they weren't going to make payroll this week. Their second week in existence. Yeah, we all saw the, or there was a lot of talk about week one ratings, and that was fine. That was great, encouraging. Have you seen anywhere the second week results? Mm-mm. I haven't either. Mm-mm. And the first, let, and let's not go overboard. The first week rating, they just weren't a disaster. Right. But and, and and I assumed week two would go down, and I'm not even ripping them. For, mm-hmm. I just. The fact that we haven't seen down? anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't heard it or read about it anywhere to suggest here's the percent drop off. Here's what it is. If this is week two, here's what we could project in week three. I, I just, I wonder, I haven't seen that. And we, you even asked the question yesterday, what was it even on? Like week one had mm-hmm. some national exposure with CBS. Was it back to CBS Sports Network? Was it, I, I don't even know where it was. <laughs> and so that would have an effect too. Yeah, I'm actually trying to look. I just wondered, wondering, just thinking out loud here, guys. Um, a lot of times, we're coming off a holiday weekend. Sometimes ratings are delayed True. by a day coming off of a three-day weekend. That might be why we haven't heard any. Or the fact it might not have been on television. Yeah. It might have been exclusively online. I know they have some sort of deal with CBS Sports Online. I just don't know if that meant like a um, Sunday ticket type deal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. As I cough in everybody's ear, <laughs> or um, that's the prime. Like that's the big game. Go to CBS Sports on, see the big AAF game. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's how it works, but the fact that they're already in financial difficulties, week one, yikes, and especially or week two, because this one, 
I'm not even allegedly, doesn't this have more of the support? And I don't know how much financial backing, but from the NFL at least, a little bit of support from the NFL? I think it – well, no, they have more than a little bit of support. Here's something I'm looking at right now. The first two AAF games were broadcast by CBS on February 9th. Drew 3.25 million viewers. Okay. Uh, more than an NBA game airing on ABC at the same time, which was Rockets Thunder, I believe. A game the next day on the NFL Network, which is owned by the National Football League, drew 640,000 viewers. Uh, number for the league's week two games on Saturday and Sunday have yet to be released. So okay. there you go. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. That would be interesting to see. Everyone will make the comparison to the XFL, which drew, you know, uh, I think we looked up this number the other day. It was like a 10 and a half share or something like that. And got a fraction of that audience in week two. Um, what would this league uh, produce? I don't know. But all I'm looking at is the fact they're in week two and they had to get a, a long-term investor on board immediately. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, okay, what's going to happen in uh, week 10 or 11 or yeah. 12 or as this season starts to wrap up for this league? Will there be a second season? Can then, they afford a second season? Um, all the rumors, too, that we heard, whether they were legit or not, of going after – Kaepernick going after Tebow I mean I think that's what those leagues personally in my opinion need a name that draws you it's hard there's no history with these franchises you can't have that so what can you have can you have a name that that lures you in and Trent Richardson perhaps does that does that move you it's more of a name but no Christian Hackenberg no but they need more of that if a league filled with more names like that helps former New York Jets great Christian great. Hackenberg yes. Manny Machado, something like Bryce Harper. I'm going to go out on a AF. limb and say that the Alliance of American Football cannot afford Manny Machado. True. Or, nor Bryce the Harper. The investment into the entire league was actually worth less than what Manny Machado got from the San Diego Padres. Isn't that amazing? Perhaps the Padres could invest in the Alliance of American Football. They're tapped out. Yeah. They Apparently the not because yeah. they're somehow tied to Bryce Harper as well. Now that would be an overhaul, but would it like? Do you, okay, I don't know what it I would just do. so I come out here and I spend over half a billion dollars on two players over the next decade, and people in San Diego go, "Cool." I don't even think they do that. Yeah, it's like, yo, that's I'm at the beach, dog. Yeah, uh, I call or the zoo. Or going the to zoo. the beach or the zoo? You I'm going at the to zoo the- today, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to go see uh, Bryce Harper and Manny Machado. Yeah. I'm, I'm at the San Diego Zoo. It's always 75. Ain't you heard? Stay classy. San Diego. Yes. Well, I'm less confident. I was confident this league would. Does the NFL swoop in? Here's here's the question. Here's the the scenario to watch moving forward. Does the NFL just swoop in at the end and like save the league and make it officially? Because it's not officially a development league. Right, they haven't Do claimed they, it to be. Right. Allegedly, other than the NFL Network, there's no financial association with the Alliance of American Football and the NFL. Week two, you already needed a new investor in Carolina. Do they swoop in and save the day? Yeah, and I think when you go down that road, I think it already changes the perception of it because now it feels like a competitor to the NFL, whether it's true or not, because everybody will go, oh, I just watched the Super Bowl just two weeks ago, Mm -hmm. now a little bit over two weeks, and the playoff run and and the best athletes in the world in the NFL. I don't know if you're another league, if you're a comparative league, if you're a league that's developmental league. I guess the way I would put it is the G League, the D League before the G League. Once it became clear that it's it was a developmental league, we're not comparing numbers on, hey, look what the Stockton Kings drew compared to the Sacramento Kings. We know what it is. Mm-hmm. We There's no concern about that. I think these leagues, the XFL, when the, if and when they launch, what are their first week numbers? What are their second week numbers? Can they hang hang with the NFL? Everybody's in that comparative mode. We don't need to be if, if, if they make themselves truly that deve- developmental league. Well, this text here says, why does the NFL broadcast AAF games on the NFL network? That's, a, that, that, that's yeah. a great question. I think the simple answer is they're not intimidated by them. They don't view it as competition. Right. They view it as like a uh, an extra piece, like a decorative yeah. feature there. Uh, we'll step out. We'll come back. We'll stick with football here because Gronk retirement has started up again. And how big of a market will there be for Mr. Big Chest?
That's next here. 1140 KHTK update. Brought to you by JR Putman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. Manny Machado is finally signed. He agreed on a 10-year, $300 million deal with the San Diego Padres. His $30 million per year deal is the richest free agent contract in American sports history. There's still no movement on the Bryce Harper front, and he remains unsigned. James Harden may not have to do everything by himself anymore. Clint Capella has missed 15 games with a thumb injury, but he'll be back Thursday when the Rockets open the second half of the season against the Lakers. Houston is in the fifth seed now at 33-24. and 24. They're one game back of the Trailblazers for the number four seed. Those are your top stories. And now it's back to the drive with Damian and Jason filling in for Dave on Sports 1140 KHTK. KHTK app, 1140 AM in Northern California. And if you want to watch the show, you can on uh, KHTK.com. Anybody believe, by the way, that that James Harden is going to stop attempting to do everything? No. Of course not. Okay. Maybe a little I'm just, less. I'm, I'm glad we've... I'm just playing with Kyle's wording there. I'm just, let's let's take a quick look at this here. Yeah. He didn't exactly fall back when Chris Paul returned. No, but I would say here's when I thought history could end with the return of Capella. So Capella, Paul, their fullest roster could possible. But now, now the streak's a thing. I'm a little bit making fun of James Harden because he's like, I don't know, I just got to do everything. This is a necessity. I have to do this. And it's like, well, do you? Yeah, because you're gonna keep doing it. Yeah, this, is this he street? could have he could have Michael Jordan on his team, and he would still go try and get thirty. Yeah, because Michael would be older, and he he, he wants to. <laughs> he I could have prime him. Michael Jordan. Yeah, he, he's, he's like if, if he had prime Michael Jordan. Well, he's still recovering from that injury he got on his uh, his foot. He needs me four years ago, right? Five years ago. I'm just gonna carry him until he takes over. Yeah. Um, we'll talk more about uh, Clint Capella's return. What that means. Uh, for the Houston Rockets uh, in the 7 o'clock hour as well. Rob Gronkowski will reportedly make a decision on whether or not he will retire in the next couple of weeks, says his agent. Stop me if you've heard this name today, Drew Rosenhaus. Also the agent for Antonio Brown. Business is really booming for Drew Rosenhaus. Yeah, he's got a couple of prime prime candidates. Uh, that's, I mean, Gronk, we heard about that a lot during the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. I'm glad for his sake. I've always heard that's the best. Like to you, don't be an emotional decision unless you were already there before the season. Like this is final. This is when I'm ending. Uh, like Dwayne Wade knows. Like mm-hmm. that he's he's put an end date on it. That's end. Um, I, I I think when you're uncertain, what I've heard Gronk say publicly is the wear and tear, uh, what it could do to him physically, what it's already done to him physically. So I don't think it's about. I think we always say guys love Sundays. Mm-hmm. or whatever day they play, you know, if mm-hmm. it's Monday night. They all love that. There's a lot of work to get to that and a lot of recovery to get through to get to there. That's what I'm wondering if he's a willing and able to go through again. He's missed 29 regular season games over nine seasons. He's been dealing with back problems since college. He's had three back surgeries since 2009. Uh, he is also a four-time first-team All-Pro and a three-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah. I'm starting to I, – I think he's not going to play. I wonder – so this was this was a theory that I had, and it'll come back when we do fair or foul at 8.30, but was it la- – Patricia's first year was last year, right? So it wasn't the – First year gone, you mean? Uh, yeah, his first, first year with Detroit. Detroit. Correct. Wasn't there a trade on the, the – that we had heard about like later that – they were going to trade, they being the New England Patriots, were going to trade him to Detroit. There was a rumor, at least, of that. And he yeah. said, I'd retire. That that was allegedly the conversation. He said, I'm I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll just retire. Is this to keep teams from inquiring about a trade for Rob Gronkowski? I don't feel like there's a motive with him. but Okay. I mean, because sometimes... Just throwing it out there. Sometimes this is done for a bigger contract, a new contract, a different contract. I feel like everything he has said has been about that, about his health, his well-being going forward, and... He can still play. That's not the mystery. It's does he want to? He's only 29. Yeah. He's already a Hall of Famer, right? I think so. And he's seen the impact of, and I think, again, that's what he's referenced. Like he's thinking about his life at 39, at 49, at 59, just other times and, and what it would look like. 
I think he's gotten beat up so badly throughout the course of his career that the idea of going to Detroit and getting beat up to win seven or eight games sure. did not sound appealing. He'll he'll wear it for a championship. He's not going to go play for Matt Patricia and win seven games. Sure. Which is your destiny if you're going to play Correct. for the Detroit Lions. You're it's going your to, ceiling. Yeah, right, because you know what they say. What? Ceiling is the roof. Oh, they do say that. They do. Yeah. Well, not they. Actually, he says that. The goat. Yeah. Isn't it funny how Mike is like the worst dresser in the history of professional basketball? Like he can't dress to save his life. Like he wears baggy jeans with holes in them. Mm-hmm. Like like not not like the uh hip, you know, torn jeans. They're just like these randomly placed like Rip Jordan jeans that he had put in production in like 1995 but never went out on the market. Yeah. So the only one who has them is him. Someone needs to tell Michael to leave the Jinko jeans in 2004. Oh, all bad. Like it's they gotta go. So bad. Like how can you be the greatest at one thing, but just be so god awful in so many others? Is he waiting for like the full cycle for him to come back in fashion? I don't know that those are coming back. I mean, strange trends come back. Right. I don't know if those uber baggy jeans are coming back. Okay. It feels like everything does, but it. Do- I mean, it. Who knows when. They photoshopped like current NBA players on some of Jordan's like more famous outfits. Oh, really? Oh my gosh, that had to be funny. <laughs> it was so great. Yeah, it was so so good. Like even back, you know, even when he he pulls up to the car in his, you know, I think it was like a a, a you know a Lamborghini with the Jumpman thing, and he gets out and he has like this you know, quadruple XL suit that's just, like, hanging off of him. Mm-hmm. And it's Mike, with big old headphones on and a disc man. Yeah. He probably, he probably had, like, you know, the second disc man that was ever created, and it's, you know, seven pounds, and he's walking around with it. I hope that's not shade at the disc man. I know, because I still use it. Yeah, same. Yeah. You never had one, Kyle. I. That's a lie. I had that. I had a Walkman. Wow. You did, did not. I did. Was it yellow? I absolutely did. It was not. It was, was there it was, was there a Walkman that was not yellow? I thought. Well, Kyle, oh, no, I'm just kidding. Mine yeah. was definitely black. Did yours have the radio? No. Why? So it was yellow? just tapes. Were those waterproof or something? <laughs> Are you still? <laughs> what was going on with those? I think that I was just a them being specific. Yellow. <laughs> not all Walkmans were yellow. Okay. <laughs> I think they were, and they were waterproof. They were. They never used in the water. <laughs> they. Really? You never used your Walkman in the water? No. No. Oh. Me neither. Yeah. You'd be the swimman. Are you? You're in the water. I get- <laughs> oh, oh, wow. The studio getting- audience approves. Jeez. For goodness sakes. Kyle had to get his, his, his little dad joke in before the top of the hour. So nicely done, Kyle. No. Again, um... Not all Walkmans were yellow. Okay. Though a large portion of them, more famous ones were. Um, yeah, I used to go through Walkmans like crazy. Why? I don't know. I just always wanted to be Pretty reliable. One. Oh, well, okay. No. Upgrade. And I used to have tapes for days. That I did, yeah. Tapes for days. Record songs off the radio. That was the best. You hit the record and play button, and then you hit pause. That yeah. way, when it's boom, you just, just hit, hit pause. the pause button yeah, real quick. Yeah, you're ready to go. And if you got any of the DJ, it was kind of a bummer, but yeah. it's all right. Because sometimes you'd hear the song enough, then you'd even go right into the three words that the DJ finished with the other yeah. song, just because you it was in your memory. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so we'll go from one Drew Rosenhaus client to another. Rob Gronkowski is uh, considering retirement. Antonio Brown is considering a new team. So apparently, business is open for Mister Big Chest. Uh, <laughs> but the question will be, uh, how big of the market is there for Antonio Brown? Yeah, I think there should be one, uh, but going back to what we've seen guys traded for here in recent memory, certainly Amari Cooper is one reference point. But um, And then I think about if we rank, which we always do before every year, like the best receivers, and right now I think people on a short list would have something along with Ant- Antonio Brown, but Julio Jones, uh, Hopkins, mm-hmm. uh, OBJ, but lot, Hopkins made the playoffs. Julio didn't this year. Beckham didn't. Yeah. So the va- kind of back into the value of – we debate value of running backs. Well, what's the value of a, of a great receiver to a winning team? Yeah, I was going to say that's a 
or is it case by case? Because those guys are all difference makers, but what difference, you know? I mean, who's been the top receiver in the league for the last several years and has been in the Super Bowl? I mean, is Julio Jones the closest? Probably. The year Matt Ryan won Julio the MVP? Yeah. yeah. But then it's two years in a row he hasn't. Oh, no, they, they made the playoffs a year ago, not this year. Yeah. They well, Julian have, Edelman's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> okay, you're kidding. I am. I'm very but much that kidding. Was but really, that was mentioned. It's been talked about. But it, when you talk about like elite, like number one receivers, like if you say top five, no Odell Beckham Jr., no Antonio Brown, Julio Jones is the only one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, when does Julian Edelman's name even come up in that conversation? In when top you talk, receivers? Yeah, like today. Yeah. I, is, it, does he even pop in the top ten? I don't think in most. Like, no. I feel like you'd have to really – I feel like Julian Edelman's name comes up when you really start thinking. Because you mentioned Antonio Brown right off the gate. You mentioned Odell Beckham Jr., and you can, you know, kind of go from there. And then, you know, even Stefan Diggs, I think, right. would, I would I would put on the list before – yeah, or, Thielen, or, DeAndre I was Hopkins. gonna say, yeah, I'd put I put uh, uh, Minnesota's two primary yeah. wide receivers on the list before I got to Julian Edelman. Yeah, and Thielen's working on a restructure right now with Minnesota. Michael Thomas for New Orleans. I mean, there's a lot of pretty high level receivers, and Edelman would be further down that list. So what? Yeah, so it goes back to what's the value, and then we discussed the potential opportunity if like what if Odell Beckham was being shopped a little bit wouldn't Beckham's price be significantly higher than uh, Antonio Brown's because he's five years younger yeah I don't know how much I think it would be higher but I don't know about significantly higher would significantly higher constitute Antonio Brown being a one and a three and which I don't I don't know that that would be the value but for for the sake of this argument a one and a three and Odell being a one and a one yeah, and I guess in in a lot of worlds that would be significantly higher. So that's fair. Boy, this Oakland Raiders story continues to take twists and turns. Will the Raiders play at the Coliseum next year and the following season? What? Yeah, there's an update on this. We've got it for you next. Good morning and welcome back. This is Cody from The Lowdown. If you want to check us out on social media, you can find me at Cody Baylor. Damien at Damien Barling, Jason at Jason Ross 1140, and Chris at Sack underscore MCFC. Also, check out the lowdown on Facebook. Damien and Jason, back to you. Thanks, Cody. Got some news here that uh, you might find interesting. Uh, if you want to connect with us, you can, by the way, the Fire Wings Hotline. Try one of their delicious 21 flavors of wings today. Fire Wings, just wing it 339 1140 800 920-1140. We're so happy you're here with us, Damian Barling, along with the king of the live stream, Jason Herbert Walker-Ross. You can listen anywhere in the world on the KHDK app, uh, Northern California on 1140 AM. You can listen on a Sony Walkman, as our man Paul is doing. He just uh, tweeted us a picture of that. Paul, we appreciate that. Extra points for anybody who's listening to us on a Walkman. Nicely done. A <laughs> lot of extra points. Uh, and even more extra points for those watching us on KHDK.com is... Jason and I apparently uh, m- dressed to match each other today as we're wearing yeah, uh, similar green. Sac State Hornet greens here. The San Francisco Chronicle is reporting that the Raiders in Oakland are close to a deal that would keep the Raiders at the Coliseum for 2019 and possibly for 2020. That wasn't talked about before. For the low, low price... Of $7.5 million in 2019 and an option to stay in 2020 at $10.5 million in the event that their new uh, stadium in Las Vegas isn't ready. Uh, Just a reminder, the Raiders walked away from a $7.5 million offer for 2019 after Oakland sued the Raiders and the NFL for antitrust issues related to the team's relocation. So, for those keeping track, the dollar figure is exactly the same, and the lawsuit, at least as best we've been reported to today, has not been resolved. It feels very one-sided right here. So we've been dancing around with where the Raiders will play for literally nothing. Right. Like, not not even like a quantable figure, like nothing. 
$7.5 million is the same exact amount it was several months ago. Which why it feels like, you know, again, it's a report and sources. I believe these are all coming from inside the Raiders organization. Anybody talk to anybody from the city? All from of the major issues have been resolved, an unnamed source told the San Francisco Chronicle. Is that right? So if I'm Oakland and I've been thrown through all of this and, oh, yeah, we'll just we'll just agree to do what we said before. No, no damage is done. No way. No way. Leverage, leverage, <laughs> leverage. They've got all the power. You, where are you going to go play? Oracle Park? I thought that was a done deal. Not a done <laughs> deal? Are you going to go agree to play with the 49ers? Mm, I don't think you want to do that either. Does Mark Davis stand up at the table and go, we're good, right? Yeah, we're cool. This is, uh, yeah, we'll do that good. deal okay. from before. We're, we're good. fine. Can we just go back to December? and? Yeah, and then rip up the lawsuit too, please. Please. Yeah. It'd be nice. And we'll, you know what, we'll stay an extra year. If, if we're, if... If it doesn't, if our beautiful palace that I got a loan to build from Bank of America, I stood in line and went through the little turnstiles to get there. Um, had to bring three uh, proofs of identity. Yeah, That's right. Forms. Yeah. <laughs> had to bring my birth certificate, my social security number. Yeah. But I left with a lollipop. It was great. It was really good. And a loan. Yes. Got a hell of a loan. Yeah. Of course, fortunately, Roger Goodell had to co sign on yeah. it. And I kept the toaster. But. Um, no, Oakland. I, I want to hear from the people. You get a multi-billion-dollar loan from Bank of America, and all yeah. you get is a toaster, right? And they agreed, but to it's what? a nice toaster to go up to ten and a half million in twenty twenty. If if their stadium's not ready, which is so nice of them. That's almost laughable. Like ten and a half million. Like yay. Yeah. Hey, at this point, on a scale of one to ten, one being not surprised, ten being totally shocked. How surprised would you be if the Raiders wound up just like long term staying in Oakland now? Like at the rate this is going. Like the whole Vegas deal just doesn't <laughs> yeah, happen. Yeah, just all falls of a through, and they sign a twenty-year lease at the Coliseum. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even renovate it. Just keep yeah, it the just, same. Nah, I guess we're just, staying here now. Just keep it the same. Seven and a half million dollars a year. It's a bargain. Nothing at this point would surprise me anymore. Yeah, I it's, would be shocked about that. Oh, of course. Like, but but, but, but would you? You're you, right. I guess. It, <laughs> I'd be shocked more in that like Jerry Jones would be rolling over in his grave. Yeah, his figurative grave, of course. <laughs> But he, I mean, <laughs> between losing the, the lawsuit to Kaepernick and then the Raiders wind up staying in Oakland, it'd be a bad little stretch for the NFL. Tough time for the NFL and the owners. Tough, t- tough time, really, for Jerry Jones, yeah. I think. Yeah. That's but bizarre. This, this is consistent with what we've heard. So, is there a, uh, is there this, the, the one thing in that that's really, really new to me, is there a fear that Las Vegas won't be ready? I don't know. I never heard that before, but I think maybe it's just a little extra it's caveat a, there. But but it's a weird, it's just a weird uh, amendment to have in the contract. Like, oh, just in case, yeah, our big palace in the desert isn't ready. We and, we want the option to stay next year. And maybe it's to avoid what this off season has done. But I feel like this off season has led us on a path of what's real and what's not. Who's bluffing? Who's who's using some leverage here? Because you know, we obviously heard about San Diego. We heard about. Uh, San Antonio we heard other locations Oracle Park we heard Santa Clara and if ultimately they're back in Oakland without much of a change it just doesn't seem to add up to me I feel like this is a one-sided story here well we'll follow it and uh, see what happens Kirk Cousins tweeted yesterday I thought this was funny uh this is Kirk Cousins tweeted in 2010 I was mad at King James LeBron James for leaving Cleveland but I've been my in Miami for a total of five minutes, and now I totally understand. Off the top of your head, how do you think that went over with fans of the Minnesota Vikings in a predominantly cold state similar to Cleveland? Uh, well, I feel like anything in the last two weeks that Kirk Cousins has done has not – well, probably since he arrived – has not been received well by any Vikings fan. So not well. It wasn't, but uh, he won many of them over again as uh, he was getting uh, frustrated responses of, why don't you just stay in Miami? That's what I was imagining. uh, Why don't you go play for the Dolphins and blah, blah, blah. He responds with the Anchorman gif. Boy, that escalated quickly, and I guess he won all of their hearts over uh, again. Well, that always works. 60% 60% of the time, it works 100% of the time. Something like that. Yeah. The math is legit. Yeah. The math is legit. Um, yeah, I feel like you can't go wrong with anger man gifts. Yeah. See, it, really in any situation. Yes. Like you want to de-escalate a situation, immediately send an anger man yeah. gift. little Ron Burgundy and you're good. Yeah, it'll work. Um, Duke in North Carolina is tonight. 
man, the prices for that are uh, pretty insane. And we asked you on Facebook a question related to that. Uh, we'll touch on that. More on the Raiders. Clint Capella is set to return for the Rockets. We'll get into that. Manny Machado's deal with the Padres. More coming up. Hour number two of The Drive with Damian and Jason next.